Good morning. Uh, this is uh, chilly on a rather chilly day at Willow Park, uh, only a mile from my home. Somewhere where I can come and do a little bit of winter fishing. And as winter has just started, it's a great time to talk about the tips and the things that I do that make my winter fishing just that little bit more successful. Not necessarily big things, but things that definitely make a difference. Uh, as you can see, my rods are lying on the floor and all my gear is still on my barrow. My first tip would be mobility. Not everybody's cup of tea, but if I'm not fishing for the fish, if I'm not in the right place, then I'm never ever going to catch them. And at this time of year, carp can get so localised. They can stay in one area for, for months on end. Uh, you know, experience has taught me that I have to find them first. So all my gear stays on the barrel. I just take out the bits and pieces I need to get me fishing. The rods are on the floor. I've cast out at very, you know, various features in the lakes, uh, in the lake, and at various distances. Just trying to cover a little bit of real estate. And the next thing is to use your most valuable bit of uh, carp fishing equipment, which are your eyes. I've only got one left but it still works a treat. And if I find them, I can load my back rods back on the barra and I'll be round there just as fast as I can. Tip number two, and just as important as all the rest really, uh, and something that's very, very often overlooked, is the preparation for the session you're about to go on. Be that for a day, be that for 24 or 48 hours, you need to make some preparation. And in probably the most important thing are the rigs. Get some rigs tied up exactly how you want them, in the warmth of your home uh, with nice warm hands. It saves you fiddling around on a bank with 10 freezing cold Cumberland sausages trying to tie rigs. And zigs, th th you know, they can be a little bit, uh, a little bit tricky at times with the lighter uh, end tackle. So make sure you do it at home. Be ready to get going as soon as you get on the bank. You don't want to have to waste any time uh, when you find the carp in the first place. My third tip, to ensure that you are comfortable when you're on the bank. Uh, all those years ago when I joined the army as a 16 year old boy, I was told that any fool can be uncomfortable and it's as true today as it was all those years ago. Working on the system of building up the layers, comfortable layers that trap the heat between them and keep you warm. Uh, and if you want an example of that, the robin that lands on your rod who puffs himself up. He might look like he's eaten all of your bait, but he hasn't. He's puffing his feathers up and the layers in between those feathers are warming up which keep him warm is exactly what your clothing is doing three or four layers and, and remember if you'll get too hot you can sweat in it which means you'll get cold and if you do it in layers and you want to move you can take a couple of layers off work your way around the lake get where you want to be and then put those warmer layers back on and as well as the layers that you're wearing of course there's your extremities uh, mainly your feet if you keep those warm then you'll always be happy. Boots that you can walk in, bait, uh, boots that will keep your feet warm. A hat on your head's keeping some of the heat in, not as much as what other people think, but at least you feel comfortable and maybe some gloves for your hands. Again, it's little bits and pieces that are keeping you comfortable and keeping you fishing to maximum efficiency. Tip number four is zigs. Now, before you all go to sleep or go out into the kitchen and have a cup of tea, let me tell you a little story. Back in 1996, I caught the second biggest carp I've ever caught on what well, wasn't known as a zig then, it was known as an anchored floater. Uh, but still, I never used them as much as I ever should. It's only been over the last couple of years that I've really, really put zigs through their paces and I've learned so much, not only about using the rigs itself, but about the carp which is the most important thing of all and especially during the winter they're not going to be rooting around on the bottom for a fraction of the time they do in the warmer weather they're going to utilize the, la the layers of water they're looking for depth 
that are slightly warmer. Now, we might not feel it to us, but they're very, very sensitive animals. And anything that is a fraction of a degree warmer is an area they're gonna stay in. By searching the water column, varying the lengths of your, uh, of your zigs and the colors that they're made for, if it's really, really deep water, you can use the adjustable zig. But you are searching. You're looking for those fish. And once you find them, very often you can change all three of your rigs to that depth and you'll get a few more bites along the way. And finally, move on to tip number five, uh, and just as important as all the others, which is choosing the correct venue to fish during the colder months. Yet yeah, we could all stay on the same water, targeting big fish, and go through what can be an incredibly grueling and, and boring experience. Uh, why not select a venue with a few more carp in it, where there's a few more people fishing? Simply because the more carp in it, the more likely you are to get a bite. And if there's a few more people there fishing it, you get a little bit of feedback. You find out what tactics are working. You find out how much bait's going in there. And uh, most importantly of all, you can probably find out where the fish are when you choose to fish it. Uh, if you can ensure it's close to home or closer to home, then it makes the whole thing even better because you can keep your eyes on it all the, all the more and you can keep bait going in if that's what you choose to do. But most of all, it's about enjoying the experience and, and catching a few fish along the way and uh, choosing the right venue is just the way to do that.